Welcome to another episode of the Hospitality Reputation Marketing Podcast, Get Great Reviews. I'm Adele Gutman, and I have a fantastic friend who's joining me as my guest today. Uh, John Tabawada is the general manager of the Casablanca Hotel in Times Square by Library Hotel Collection. John and I had the pleasure of working, certainly a pleasure for me, pleasure of working together for 20 years. Isn't that yes. right? 20 years, Adele. <laughs> great years, great years. And what makes John so special is that for many of those years, the Casablanca Hotel was ranked as the number one hotel in New York. It is just a modest hotel. It is a sweet 45 room hotel off of Broadway on 43rd and Broadway. It's the closest hotel to the dropping of the ball on New Year's Eve. That's a very special time for us. But how such a modest hotel came to achieve such heights in uh, reputation management, in guest satisfaction, it's really remarkable. And it, it, I just wanted to have an opportunity to let John tell you from his own words and from his own heart, how on earth did you do that, John? So you want me to share my <laughs> secrets? <laughs> yes, we'll share our secrets together. You know, um, and, and let, let's start out with the fact that you started, did you start as a bellman? I started as a bellman, yes. And you uh, and never I, knew another way of doing hotel business nope. except the uh, sparkling sunshine way. Yes, ma'am, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, it's been a very fun journey, uh, learning from mentors like you uh, and my other colleagues, uh, learning and understanding the business. It's, it's been a ride, it's been a fun ride. Wonderful. What, what positions did you have before you came to be general manager? I was a bellman. I helped with engineering, a little bit of housekeeping, houseman. Uh, then I became the front desk, uh, front desk agent. Learning. Then I ended up learning a little bit uh, rooms reservation, and then uh, front office manager, and the rest is history. Uh, mm -hmm. I was given the opportunity, and uh, I took advantage. Uh, very grateful of it, and uh, it's been a it's been a, a fun a fun ride. It's been an inspirational ride because. Um, there's so much to learn. It's, every day is a new journey. It's true. It's true. And I remember when you first started as a general manager, you had everything that you needed because you had your, your heart and your willingness to learn and you had a support team around you. But mm -hmm. you really were learning on the job every day, yeah. wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every day, every day was something new. I loved your attitude about learning new things <laughs> and about taking uh, comments, you know, feedback from people. And I want yes. you to share that a little bit, because I think that that is really a, a large part of your success. Thank you, Adele. Appreciate that. You know, sometimes people don't want to hear things, but I love hearing them because, you know, we're not perfect. We all, we all make mistakes. We all need to learn. And Nothing better than receiving little comments here and there on how to become a better person. And I think that that goes for guest feedback. When you have that attitude about yourself and you truly believe it in your heart, that feedback is something to be embraced because it gets you to where you want to go. I mean, businesses around the world are wondering what innovations do they need to make in order to be more successful at their business. Guess what? Ask your customers, ask yes. your own employees yes. because they know where the problems are. They know where the dirt is being swept under the rug. And if you're open to communication and you're really open and listening, they'll tell you exactly what you need to uh, innovate in order to be successful. And that's why you're so good at at uh, <laughs> reputation management, because it, many people think that it's about managing not to get bad reviews, or how do I respond to a bad review that already came up? But really, it's about cons the constant evolution 
of getting better, better, and better every day, right? You know, the word hospitality says it all. And, you know, I had this conversation with uh, another hotelier, a friend of mine, and we were discussing about hotels. You know, hospitality, everybody thinks is just numbers and trendiness nowadays. You know, but if you don't offer the best service possible, your hotel's not going to be successful in any way. You know, so we were talking about that because everybody thinks numbers, 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 and trendy, trendy, trendy. And everybody's starting to forget the big key here, which is hospitality, service, catering, you know, making sure people feel like they're at home when they stay with you. And I think that's the key. That's right. You know, the typical guest satisfaction for a hotel, I think that a lot of the hotels in the world, the majority will fall in between 70 and 80% guest satisfaction. While, you know, at the Library Hotel Collection, we're, you know, 95% and up guest satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And it means that we can save so much time instead of constantly dealing with problems, just um, making things better instead. Yeah. Uh, when you fix the problem, you don't have to deal with it as often as if mm -hmm. you just handle the problem, but allow it to be there. Yeah. And also it's a little bit heartbreaking, I think, for the staff when they see that there are problems, they get yeah, down. Yeah, you're not putting minds in it. So basically, if you don't care, they won't care. Such a great point. Such a great point. So how do you keep the energy of the team so positive? Because you really, everybody there is always 100% ready to do the extra, go the extra mile for a guest. They have sweetness that you cannot train. How do you keep their energy up? You know what, Adele? Uh, one of the things I learned um, starting from the bottom is that as a, an employee in any department besides a GM, you know, it's always very good to be feel appreciated, to know that you're appreciated, to have a conversation with your GM, for your GM to make an, some sort of contact with you or have a conversation with you. I mean, there's times where I sit down in the break room with my, with my crew just to see how they're doing. That shows them that I care, that I'm interested in them, and I'm grateful for them being working with me. So I think it's very key that you pay attention to your staff. Not just the good morning, hello, come in and out. I think the fact that you can have an actual conversation, they appreciate. The fact that you see their talent as conversations occur, you know, they, they love to hear those things. You know, it's a support system. So we support each other. You know, people need confidence in mm -hmm. order to be brave enough to be bold and go the extra mile or do something that they haven't seen somebody else do in the past. So if you don't want them to just copy what other, other people are doing, which sometimes is a good thing, yeah. but if you want them to really use their imagination and their creativity to do something more, you have to make them brave. And that yeah. means you have to make them feel confident by saying, I really like what you said to that person, or I like the way you handled that situation, or um, beautiful, you, ha you have grown and blossomed so much in the last month. It's been a pleasure to see that. Isn't it nice to hear things like that? Absolutely, compliments go such a long way. I mean, there's times where, you know, I would stand right next to one of my agents and as they're doing things, you know, we'll have a conversation. I was like, what were you scared of? You know, what, mm -hmm. what, what held you back from making this decision? You know, mm -hmm. just the fact that you're there analyzing and assuring them that it's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. But here we go to become better. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way. Your, your staff feels so energetic, the fact that you're there supporting them. You're not just a GM, you're involved right. with the whole operation system. You're out there sweeping the floor if you need to. You're assisting them with laundry bags if needed. You know, can I help you with the reservations? Can I help you with this? The fact that you're supporting your team goes a long way. They mean, that means that they can depend on you. Mm -hmm. So that being said, now they feel happy, comfortable, prideful, 
on making decisions and making sure. You see, I always say, happy staff, happy guests. That's right. If your staff are happy, comfortable, and prideful, that's going to reflect to your guests. So that would be just a, it's a, it's a domino effect, mm -hmm. you know? How do you handle when uh, you need to make a correction? How do you do that in a way that doesn't uh, upset someone's dignity? Oh, well, you know, th so there's been situations where, you know, some of my staff members have made mistakes. We all make mistakes, we're not perfect. We will sit down and we'll say, okay, this is what transpired. What would you dif do different from what you learned from your mistake? We'll sit down, we'll talk about it. We'll analyze it. I'll give you my opinion and we go from there. Rather than making them feel work with fear, you're making them feel work with some sort of comfortable growth feeling. Absolutely. That the mistake is made, how do we grow from there? And if there, something happened on the, uh, uh, in the reviews where we got a bad complaint, I could almost, I could feel the pain sometimes of the staff member that they feel so bad that something like that happened because I know that wasn't their intention. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, you know, I try to do is, you know, accept, I know you didn't mean this to go wrong like this. Let's mm -hmm. just talk about it and just sort of see what, what we can learn. What, how can yeah. we move forward? What, what can we take away from this to maybe help everybody else also in the future know to try this instead of this? And sometimes it, you're really just trying the other thing. You don't know whether the other person would have reacted differently. Yeah. But you have to give people options for if you know, see that this didn't work, let's try to find some more elegant ways of presenting that to have a different reaction next time. And they Absolutely. get more and more skilled. They really do. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I always treat my staff like we're family because if you think about it, I always say this to them. I said, we spend more time with each other than we actually do with our own family. It's true. You know, so this is our family. And the fact that you treat them like that, not just an employee or a number, it goes a long way. You know, they, they feel appreciated, wanted. The fact that you, you guide them and you teach them, you know, opens doors for them. You know, there's uh, other staff members that I've hired as Bellman who are now front desk, uh, front desk agents, who are assistant front desk uh, managers. I think all of the GMs in, in, in the library hotel collection started off either at the front desk or as a bellman or a yeah. housekeeping or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's been a couple. <laughs> There's been a couple who were housemen. There was another one who was a bellman who also became a general manager. And that's a beautiful thing. The fact that they see that, that there's opportunities, it goes a long way. It, you know, it makes them hungry. It makes them strive for more than what they want, more than know. Because they know it's possible to, to yeah. move ahead. And I think that a lot of the reason that people hire from outside is that they haven't been working to grow and develop their teams. So mm -hmm. when something became available, there wasn't somebody ready because you're not teaching everybody as though they're a future general manager. But I believe that when you speak to the front desk or even uh, the bellman or anyone, I feel like you treat them as though they're the future department head for that uh, office or the, or the future general manager. I think that you give them that kind of respect and that Absolutely. they feel that and they appreciate your confidence in them. But you know what it is also, Adele, is that you know, your door has to always be open for your staff. There are staff members that come up to you with questions asking you if they want to learn. Why not teach them? You know, just because you're in this department doesn't mean I can't teach you. You know, us as managers, we shouldn't have fear of teaching anyone. Uh, you know, it, you should be able to teach everything, every role possible. If they ask, teach. Why not? That's how I got there. I agree. And you know what else I like that you do? When you have a problem in the hotel with a very irate guest, or maybe a less irate guest, a moderate irate guest. Okay. 
there is, I don't know, you know what, I, I feel so proud of you because, you know, I, I obviously was already a 20 year veteran by the time that we met and <laughs> that we're just starting out out of school. And so to watch, to watch you grow was so great. But now I think that you are the best at turning around an irate guest of anybody I've ever seen. I don't think I, I, extraordinary, extraordinary. <laughs> Thank you. So, and I love that you told me that you bring someone with you anytime it's physically possible for you to take one of the team with you, you'll, mm -hmm. you will do so for that interaction. Tell me how they feel about it, how you feel about it. What, what's the benefit of doing that? You know, the benefit of uh, doing this, it's, it's, first of all, it's, it's something that I've always wanted to share with my staff because the more they learn, the more asset they offer you as a manager. We, all, we, we will always have problems in a hotel. I love bringing, you know, either a front desk agent or even a bellman. I bring them with me and I'm like, listen, I just want you to listen. We'll figure it out later. So we'll sit down with the guests, you know, find out what's going on, introduce ourselves, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll actually gather up and just discuss the issue ask his opinion, I'll give you my feedback, and then we'll see from there. See, the benefit from that that I've learned throughout the years is that when a guest is upset and you're not there, the fact that they're taking one initiative and know how to handle the problem makes it easier for the guest to relax by the, by the time either they can solve the issue or have to see you the next day. So they're not built up with so much fire inside that by the time they come downstairs, they're even more furious than possible. They're a little bit more relaxed or a solution is solved. So I think it's very important, the fact that you get your staff involved in situations like this, because in this business, you know, we always say we want to build leaders, you know, and this is a perfect way to build leaders. You know, you teach That's them. Right. That's right. I feel, you know, sometimes hoteliers get busy. They're so busy with what they have to do that they mm -hmm. can't think about taking care of the staff, but really taking care of the staff is what they have to do so Absolutely. that they can be free because they are, they actually know how to handle things on their own. Absolutely. But, uh, some people say, well, I trust my team to do what they need to do. Have you really shown them how, what they need to do? Have you just showed them the basics of what they need? And when something goes off, are they are they searching for a way to solve a problem or have you really equipped them completely to solve mm -hmm. the problem? But this goes back to the first question. Um, you know, what do I do to make the staff feel happy? Things like this, you know, teaching them makes them feel worthy. Yes. You know, the fact that they are appreciated goes such a long way. And coaching and, and, uh, and mentoring. Mm -hmm. makes a person feel appreciated. Absolutely. It's not that money doesn't make a feel, person feel appreciated, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So um, what are some of the moments that have really made you appreciate this particular way of doing business? Like what makes this way of doing business of coaching the team and making sure the team is happy and, and making sure the guests are happy. What do you love about it? One, um, I love the fact that my staff have been with me for years. And some of the staff members that I've had working with me have grown in the company. And to me, that means a lot because I was able to teach them. I love the hospitality business because I love dealing with people. I also love the fact that and I love seeing this so very often that the guests become family with the staff. It's, it's so, you know, it's, I sit in the desk sometimes and I see Victor, uh, come over here. Let me give you a hug. You know, the, he hugs the whole family. And I'm like, this is amazing. I said, we're, do, we're doing it right. I said, the fact that that communication makes everything else priceless, you know? It, it, it is. It's it an is. amazing feeling. Yeah. Just to see that your, your, your employees are loving what you do. Well, we won't talk about the financials of what's <laughs> happening now during COVID. I know that, that uh, 
when we're ready to reopen, especially Broadway, since it, 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 since the Casablanca is a Broadway hotel, yeah. it will be fantastic once again. But I have a, I have a lot of hugs to catch up. Pre-COVID, your, your figures were so great, really. Yes. I mean, I would see your, your rates being $150 a night over a lot of your neighborhood hotels. Mm -hmm. And you would be packed and they would be hungry. Yes. <laughs> and actually what we, we, I think we would call having um, like 82% occupancy to be a terrible hole in the, <laughs> like, yes. what is this? Why are we having four available rooms? This is so uncomfortable, true. you know? Um, uh, I think that it's unbelievable how newer hotels could open nearby with a lot of bells and whistles sometimes that we didn't have and yeah. certainly an all new pro property and still could not touch our <laughs> ADR and occupancy because they would see the Casablanca at the top of the list year after year after year after year and I remember one time, because the, the TripAdvisor rankings can go up and down, like, you know, now you're number one, now the giraffe is number one, or yeah. something like that, but, but always staying about the top. But there, I remember there was like three and a half years that not one day you were in Casablanca was not. Yeah, we were in the top all one. Of New York yeah. on TripAdvisor. Yes. Really yes. amazing. Something to be very proud of. Uh, <laughs> my staff were a majority of part, part being of that. How about the housekeeping team? Because people are always saying that hotel is so shiny clean, <laughs> it is immaculate. It is, it is, you know, it is an older hotel, like altogether. It's not a, one of those trendy uh, uh, hipster style hotels, mm -hmm. very kind of rustic motif in the Casablanca Moroccan style that it is, but it is so, it, it is so well maintained. How do you keep those housekeepers so energetic? You know, I have a habit uh, every day to inspect as many rooms as possible. Uh, I think as a GM to be involved in your rooms and seeing what your product is and how it's taken care of is the success of your business to walk into the rooms to see if things are being cleaned the way they're supposed to, not just on top, I'm talking about lifting under, to see what's not there, you know, what's there. Um, so to be actually involved with housekeeping and also encouraging your staff, you're, you know, this, this is all about encouraging your crew, you know, good job, oh my God, can you please tell the, uh, this housekeeper that she did a phenomenal job, this was amazing, this was clean. You know, to get that involvement and then for them to see you there, they also appreciate what they do. So, you know, I always say is the key of the success of a business, the GM is so critical because the more he's involved, uh, he or she is involved, the more the staff will appreciate their job because Absolutely. they're being approached, they're being commented on, you know, little things like this, your staff will always appreciate the fact that they're doing a phenomenal job. They'll continue to love and shine on what they do. Do you ask them for their opinion? For the housekeepers, yes, so absolutely. I ask everyone's opinion, even from engineering. I don't I know more from the engineer that's stuff. One of the key takeaways: <laughs> ask their opinion, because they know, they yeah. know. They just maybe don't want to do it a different way if they if they don't feel confident that you're going to appreciate their suggestions. But mm -hmm. when you ask them they can come up with some really good ideas, right? Absolutely, you know, there's been ideas, there's been times where I've taken some of my front desk agents ideas, some of me, my engineers ideas, housekeeping ideas, so, you know, we've come up with different solutions, but the fact that you listen to them is the success of your business. Yes, and you're collaborating with them. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to make all of the great ideas come from your own mind. That would be impossible to have as good as a result as if you ask everybody for their ideas Absolutely. on Absolutely. how we can improve and appreciate when they bring you uh, suggestions to the table, even if you don't use them. Sometimes it just gets filed away for future 
for future use, right? And uh, yeah, sorry, go but, ahead. But this, but this, this goes back to to what I said earlier. You know, always having your doors open for your staff. The fact that they they see that and understand that goes a long way. I think it's more than having your doors open. You invite them in. I invite them, correct. Because if you don't invite them in, they will still be shy to, to come forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. You encourage them to come to you with ideas on how to Absolutely. make it better. And then it's nice for them to see their idea at work actually come mm -hmm. to life in making the place better. I've seen sometimes when I'd be uh, touring the hotel with someone or taking pictures or something, and I'll see an open door and I'll see how the housekeeper made all the children's toys arranged <laughs> on the bed, like, a, like you could just imagine the joy of that child coming in and seeing their bed with all the toys lined up on it. <laughs> or I'll see like just little decorative things or, oh, we heard somebody just graduated or it was their sweet 16. So we wrote happy sweet 16 in rose petals all over the bed. Or we did just the sent some little treat or some little goodie or made some little fuss that made people feel so welcome. It's the little things, Adele. It, you know, that's right. The little things are really the big things. It's the little things that make a difference. And this is why I'm very grateful of the team I have because they take so much pride on what they do. You know what? First of all, you're picking nice people. Thank you. Who really care. And second of all, they're blossoming in an environment where they can really uh, enjoy mm -hmm. exhibiting that kindness because not every, not every environment encourages people to really be themselves and give from their heart yeah. and, and show who they are. Very there are true. some places just teach um, people to do the task or say, that's not your role. This is your role, stay in your lane. But actually, you know, I also, I'm like bussing tables, wiping down the <laughs> bathroom, putting in a yes. fresh toilet paper. Uh, I've seen it. <laughs> taking out what's off the floor, whatever it is, because, because we only have one goal and that's making people really happy. But you see, that's the formula, Adele. That's the formula. <laughs> That's the formula, you know. And, I always tell my staff, no does not exist in that vocabulary. That's right. You know, we're always willing and able to do as much as we can. As long as it doesn't, as long as it doesn't no, it doesn't crazy another stuff. guest yes. or hurt our business somehow, yeah, we're going to find a way of, of making uh, them help. And, and it was uh, incredibly financially rewarding. Yes because we didn't really have to spend any money on advertising because mm. I guess we're doing all the good advertising for us. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> That's right. very true. Well, is there anything else you want to say? You know, I've removed closet doors. <laughs> I've uh, <laughs> rearranged beds. Um, the only advice I can give people is, you know, they're coming to your home. You know, the hotel becomes their home during their stay here. You want to make it feel like home for your travelers. And I think if you can do that, you know, it's the beginning of a beautiful friendship, as we say here at the Casablanca. Uh, then the rest is history. I mean, I've had guests who, unfortunately, you know, being in Times Square can be sometimes a little noisy for people who are not used to the noise. Uh, but, you know, there's a magic that we provide uh, that, you know, we understand them and understanding them and having a solution is always going to be the most positive thing you can do. But if you don't understand them, everything else is just going to go sour. Um, patience, you know, dealing with people is not an easy task. You know, we hoteliers, you know, we all know that, you know, dealing with people is it's a talent, I always say, because not everybody has. Um, and just 
appreciate, uh, appreciate your crew, you know, make them feel loved, make them feel wanted, make them feel appreciated. Same um, with the guests. Same thing with the guests. I mean, Adele, yeah. I've, throughout my years here, I think I've made so many wonderful, wonderful friends. Um, I've seen kids, you know, <laughs> And I'm like, what do they eat? I was like, where did the time go? Uh, now they're in college. Um, geez, I just gave you guys all my age. <laughs> but, um, you know, just the fact that you are considered some sort of family to them, it's something that's so priceless as a hotelier. Uh, something that you can... Oh my goodness, I have so many friends just because of <laughs> That's this. Beautiful. Even during but, this whole COVID stuff, I have guests calling me on my personal phone just to funny. see what I'm doing, how I'm doing. So while we don't know exactly when the Casablanca will be opening, mm -hmm. sometime before the summer, don't you think? I think so. So uh, tell everybody how to reach you and why they should come stay and check out the Casablanca Hotel, <laughs> Bright Library Hotel Collection. Well, you can always reach me at john at casablancahotel.com. I can give you a million reasons uh, to come stay with us. But one of my main reasons is if you want to feel like you're at home. With family. With family, this will be the place. <laughs> Become part of us and we will just share the city with you. Mm -hmm. And that's what's special about the Casablanca. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank John. you, Adele. Such a pleasure talking to you. Lovely to see you again. And yes, I can't ma. wait to visit the Casablanca again yeah. soon. <laughs> we miss you. <laughs> Thank you. Miss you too. Take Bye. care, Adele. Bye-bye.